Hello friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide and we are on March 26th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, earthquakes, volcanoes and world weather. Always starting out here looking at our sun. Brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is looking at the last 48 hours of imagery. A couple M-class solar flares to talk about. Having a look at the last 48 hours incoming. Watching on the left-hand side, which is the southern region of the sun, that plasma filament is about to rip away. You can see it start to move in the last few images there having a look at outgoing here bright sunspot region in the center disc still producing m-class solar flares having a look at multi-spectrum the last two days of events notable there in the bottom left hand corner those plasma filaments stretching from the surface and then just in the last few images you can see a minor eruption in that region it could be from a sunspot in the back. We also have a coronal hole, which is getting ready for an Earth-facing frenzy. That last one was enhanced by the coronal mass ejection from the solar flare. So we'll see what happens here in the next couple days. 171 angstroms looking at eight sunspot regions right now. Have a look at these in fluid motion. Some pretty large black spots there on our sun. Solar cycle 25 ramping up and getting ready to give us a show. Space weather conditions currently we are under R1. Minor radio blackout impacts are expected. Minor degradation to high frequency radios. Solar winds are coming in at 519 kilometers per second right now. That is definitely down from what we've seen the last two days. Solar X-ray flux showing there three minor M-class solar flares, one of them a long duration. Solar proton flux coming down to a more normal range. Geomagnetic activity hanging around at a KP3, but definitely a little bit normal from the other day. Our solar winds, they did top out at 880 kilometers per second. Right now they're 591, but there is our space weather event highly visible on all of this telemetry. Notable there, the density incoming. Showing here, this is the last six hours of imagery of our magnetosphere depiction. We had a minor blowout there as the winds slowed down and then sped back up. Boom. Some very fast solar winds, folks. Having a look at the highest frequency affected here. Cosmic charged particles coming into our atmosphere. Strong pulses over the eastern Pacific with those minor M-class solar flares today. Current Space Weather Prediction Center spiral not showing much. We have a minor... Storm coming our way 27th into the 28th, according to this spiral. Other than that, we will be in the void just before our coronal hole wind stream. And here is ISWA space prediction spiral showing most recent CME taking off towards Mercury, set to give us a glancing blow 27th into the 28th. So tomorrow night... And the day after, we will be seeing our next space weather event. Having a look here at Lasco 2 coronagraph, showing space weather leaving our sun. Most recent eruption was on the back side. Plasma filament there ripping away from the south. And then watch in the left bottom left-hand side. We will be seeing a CME come from that region. So stay tuned. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours as we did have some pretty deep earthquakes the last two days. Expecting something big here. We're going to start out here with the largest on the map, 5.4 Pangai Tonga. 
as well a 5.2 here reported Madang, Papua New Guinea. Some pretty deep earthquakes through the Banda Sea and up into the Philippines. So on watch through the Philippines plate and up into Japan, especially after this deep earthquake here. Tagain, Japan, 4.6. As well, Atlasovo, Russia, 4.7. Pretty deep earthquake for the region. And then across the U.S., largest across this, well, off the coast was a 3.7 magnitude band in Oregon. Other than that, no major swarms to talk about. USGS is reporting 271 earthquakes across the map, and a lot of them are through Alaska and as well the California state. But also some notable activity moving up into Yellowstone and into the Pacific Northwest. That's right, minor seismicity south of Yellowstone Lake and as well at the lake and northward. And then minor seismicity here right around Mount St. Helens, Pacific Northwest region of the Cascades. Heads up as we are seeing some tremor reports coming from the region. Having a look here at those tremors. This is the last six days of minor seismicity right from Northern California to Vancouver, Canada. 975 epicenters. Carrying on here, El Salvador, 4.3 earthquake, 72 kilometer depth though. Pretty quiet through Central America right now. Dominican Republic, largest being a 3.7. Then a 4.4 earthquake here, Argentina, 185 kilometer depth. And a 5.2 earthquake here reported Ascension Island. Now, just yesterday, we reported the earthquake Easter Island. Now we're going to Ascension Island. 4.5 earthquake reported Iran. And as well, notable continual activity up into northern China. And that's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. Have a quick glance at the last seven days for earthquakes. And this is where I take a quick moment to thank you all for subscribing and all of the love and support to this channel. I appreciate you all wanting to know information about our planet, our sun, and everything that has to do with it. Thank you for all your memberships. Thank you for all the donations. Heads up, if you live in an earthquake prone zone, please just be ready. Something is a brewing, especially through the Atlantic right now, quite possibly up into Europe. Now let's carry on to the SO2 forecast. Sulfur dioxide emissions, big plume coming out of the southern hemisphere. I have no idea where this came from. Was not there yesterday. Quite possibly that region right there could have had a volcanic eruption, but big SO2 cloud coming out of there. Overlooking Australia, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Forecast showing that southern sulfur dioxide moving right up into New Zealand. And then look at our northern hemisphere. Oi, oi, oi. This is some nasty air quality, everybody. And if you haven't noticed, there is some dirty rain out there right now. And I would not recommend licking it or drinking it. Because, folks... Most likely, it's acid rain that is falling. There is a lot of SO2 in our northern hemisphere right now, and it seems to just continue to barrel out of Iceland. Two cones left now in Iceland, and it just keeps making a volcanic table through the region, rising up and up and up, and it does not seem to be stopping. Carrying on here with world weather, Across Canada right now, we've got that low-pressure system heading into Ontario, set to bring blizzard-like conditions. Low-pressure system on the west coast will be grinding southward along the coast before finally making landfall in the Gulf of California. And then a big system comes out of the central United States. And some cold temperatures will be coming by the long-range forecast. April 4th, we could be seeing quite a bit of snow across Canada. And as well, United States. Look at this. Heavy 
snowfall amounts, especially through the Atlantic provinces, Pacific Northwest regions of United States and West Coast. Upwards of 75 centimeters of snow falling across the Canadian prairies. Carrying on here, let's have a look at our upper level winds depicting our polar vortex, which is not too visible right now as everything is shifting to the southern hemisphere for winter down there. I'll give you a quick glance here. As you can see, the energies are a swirling and starting to pick up around Antarctica. And watch for that to gradually enhance itself and get more intense in the coming weeks. Much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's update. If you did, please don't forget to smack that like button, comment, share, and we'll see you for next video. Stay safe out there. Stay safe and healthy. Stay aware, prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world. Thank you.